Welcome back to Catbird Hill. If it's your first time checking out our channel, my name's John. And today on Catbird Hill, we're gonna learn how to permanently, forever, eliminate this multi-flora rose, my most hated invasive plant we have on this property. So last week we shot a video uh, using the Echo 3020T brush, uh, professional uh, brush cutter, weed trimmer, uh, with a brush blade on it to uh, tackle an area of multi-flora rose. I want to show you what that looks like uh, four or five days later, and then I'm going to show you how to finish the job if you have this nasty, nasty stuff growing all over the place. Sometimes I feel like it grows on me. It literally, I'm just having some fun here, it literally attaches itself to you when you walk through the woods. Um, it's just a mess. It, I don't even bother going into the, the wild areas of our property without wearing a pair of logger pants, double, thick, uh, double thickness logger pants, because these, uh, these thorns are just absolutely nasty. This is just a little twig. Uh, I don't know how much of that you can see but these thorns are just razor sharp and one of the problems is that they very easily break off and they'll get stuck in your gloves and your pants it's just a total total nasty plant and we have tons of it here in southeastern Pennsylvania so what I wanted to do was give you guys a, a view of what the area looks like that we cleared last week and this is the area here around our real nice pretty hawthorn tree and you can kind of see if this is you know I've, I've pulled away the stuff that was cut down you can see that by and large it's it's pretty much dried out it's all kind of withered up um, there's still some green wisps here and there you know I didn't clear I didn't get it all I'm gonna you know finish I'm gonna do a little more uh, brush cutting uh, in, shortly after we do this video, but by, you know, it, for the most part, as I mentioned last week, this stuff dries out and begins to decay very, very quickly. So uh, the next step is to deal with what we have left. And as you can see here, this is kind of like a, a mother plant. Um, it's, a, it's a very large uh, multi-stemmed base to the multi-flora rose. And we're gonna we're gonna show you how we deal with that, and then treat it with a an herbicide. I'm gonna show you how to do that very safely. We're gonna talk about the safe application of the herbicide in this in this uh, particular situation, and then you know when to do it, um, exactly how to do, you know perform the technique properly, and so forth, and uh, and we'll show you how to how to get rid of this stuff forever. Stay tuned. Okay, so what I did is I kind of moved, I moved the camera to a different location. I'm kind of, I'm chasing the sun here. I want, I want to make sure that you guys can really see exactly what we're doing. This, this is a very similar clump to the one that I showed you a moment ago. Uh, this actually is probably a little bit of a bigger, a bigger area. So this is what was left after the, the cutting last week with the brush cutter. Now, basically what you want to do here is you want to cut this down, and I'm going to cut it pretty low. I'm going to get it pretty close to the ground because I don't want to keep tripping over, you know, leftover stumps. And once it's cut, and, and I'm going to say this pretty, pretty much immediately after it's cut, you want to spray it with the herbicide. And what we're using is a 50% glyphosate concentration. So this is a quart spray bottle. Uh, I've got it marked. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in the sun, 50% glyphosate. Whatever you do, folks, please label bottles when you make stuff up like this. There are just too many horror stories uh, of people forgetting what they put in bottles and spraying them on things they shouldn't or thinking they're bug spray or whatever but it, it happens i hear it all the time and you know the research and, I, and I've, I've spent 
a lot of time researching this and a little disclaimer i have been i have gone through professional training for herbicide and pesticide application uh, the, the research shows that for woody plants like this it's considered a woody plant a 50 percent glyphosate concentration is is what you need to do what's called a cut stump treatment and and the reason you do this treatment with that concentration it's much higher than you'd ever use for spraying doing what's called a foliar spray is that you're getting you want to get the herbicide into the circulatory system of the plant so it takes it down to the roots and, and basically kills the plant systemically including the roots if you don't do that if you just cut, and I mentioned this in last week's video, if you just keep cutting this and cutting this, you're not really solving the problem. The roots are still alive and it'll still continue to push up uh, new growth over time. So, you, you know, I really try to minimize broadcast spraying, foliar spraying. It, 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 you know, not only are there some concerns about possible health risks with spraying this stuff, getting it airborne, but at the same time, I've got too many nice things around here that I don't want to kill. If I was to spray any of the areas that I showed you last week, I guarantee you around, under, near any of those multiflora plants are beautiful native ferns, beautiful, beautiful native wildflowers. I don't want to kill that stuff. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut this down. I'm going to use a little steel um, handheld cutter here. And, and you notice what I'm doing, if you, I don't know if you noticed or not, I've got, I've got a, a, a very protective glove here. This is a gauntlet glove, uh, leather and, and a tough material here to protect my arms when I'm working with this stuff. But underneath of that glove, I've got a thick vinyl glove. I think this is an eight mil vinyl glove. And anytime you're applying any kind of pesticide or herbicide, please make sure you have a totally occlusive glove on. So I'm actually putting that glove inside of this one. So these things, these spray bottles leak and they'll drip and, and you know, it'll soak through leather easily. Uh, you want to make sure you have some skin protection underneath. So we're just going to knock this baby down, get it out of the way. Okay, so what we've done here is we have removed all the excess stems and kind of got it down to a, a ground level. Let me see if I can get the camera a little bit more on, on these stumps here. Let me just make sure I can get my knife here. I'm just going to use this as a reference point there. Okay, okay, so these are the stumps that we're going to deal with, these little cut pieces here. I call them stumps. I mean, even though they're not trees, they're, they're woody plants, but each of those is a stump, and we're doing what's called a stump, a cut stump treatment. All right, so what you want to do is as quickly as you can as soon as you have cut this you need to do the treatment because if you wait too long what's going to happen is sap and and different fluid in the in the stem of the of the plant the stump here is going to start to exude up and cover that and that's sort of a protective mechanism you want to get the herbicide onto that area as quickly as possible so all i'm going to do is just spray and I'm just, I'm coating the tops of these stumps, making sure that I, you know, soak it. And that's it. So that's, you know, very minimal amount of material herbicide that I put on there. What's important is to make sure that when you do this, you get the herbicide to completely cover the stump. And it's very important that you get it almost dripping over the sides you know, a little bit of plant uh, anatomy here, the outer edge of any woody plant, when you cut it, tree, shrub, whatever it is, it's that outer layer just inside the bark, just, you know, just basically at the tip of my knife blade there. That's where the circulatory system for the tree 
or the, the plant is located. You know, just if you were, you know, if this was a really large uh, stump and you just spray the center thinking you get it, you will not get it. it I can almost guarantee you it's going to grow back. So you'll get, you'll get shoots off the side and you'll get another plant over time. Make sure you soak that outer layer. And that's how you treat this. Now, you know, this, this takes a little bit of time and yes, it's tedious and it's not, you know, a very uh, a speedy process, but if you want to get rid of this stuff permanently, this is how you do it. 50% uh, concentration of glyphosate and I use, I get my, I buy mine in two and a half gallon jugs, uh, at usually a tractor supply or some other farm ag store. You want to look for the active ingredient glyphosate, and I'll, I'll try to um, just spell that out for you. The active ingredient glyphosate should be at 41% minimum, preferably 43%. That's, that's ideally what you want to have. Um, make sure when you are mixing the stuff up, have on you know, long uh, rubber vinyl gloves, wear safety goggles, make sure you have your skin totally covered. Most of the mishaps with herbicides and pesticides come in the mixing process. Understand that's when the material is at its most dangerous. When it's very concentrated and you've got it close to you, that's when you can really have some, some serious problems. The other product uh, which is commonly used uh, to do this cut stump treatment is called triclopyr. I'll also put that up. That usually comes in an 8% concentration. Again, you would mix that 50% uh, of the product and 50% water. Either one of these things tends to work very, very well. I've been managing you know, this problem for 20 years and this really is the only way to, to manage it completely and safely. So let's just uh, break away from this and we'll talk a little bit more about how to manage some other invasive plants. So I did, I showed you guys last week some air, other areas of the property that are covered with multi-floor rows. This just happens to be one of those areas here. It's only about 10 feet or so from where we were doing that cut stump treatment. So this is a massive amount of multi-floor rows. Uh, I've never ever attempted to treat this area or, or control this in any way. It's, it's, you know, it's fairly remote. It doesn't get in my way. Occasionally I will uh, use the brush blade and just push it back two or three feet so it doesn't encroach any further. But anyhow, if I was to spray, if I was to do uh, what's called a foliar application with a backpack sprayer or an, um, you know, a tractor mounted or ATV mounted power sprayer, I would have to really, really broadcast that spray over a very, very large area. And I, you know, again, there are just too many risks associated with doing that. Even if I had on proper respiratory safety gear, um, I have no idea what's under there. There could be some little animals living under there. Um, there could be some beautiful native plants living under there. Um, just as an example of the kind of stuff that you don't want to kill, right in front of this, and again, this is kind of growing in the midst of multi-floor rows, is a beautiful native plant. You, hope, you know, you guys have, may have seen this before. Uh, it's called Jack in the Pulpit, Aracemia. And it's a wonderful plant for kids. It's got, there's Jack, there's the little, um, you know, there's Jack and he's in the pulpit. That's how it gets the name, Jack in the Pulpit. Look at that beautiful color. Uh, hopefully you, you guys can see that on that leaf there. Um, I'll try to turn it around maybe so it's in a little bit more in the sun. But that, that's just a beautiful plant. And, you know, I'd hate to see that kind of stuff get damaged uh, uh, and eliminated by doing a big broadcast spraying of this area. There are some other uh, really pr uh, persistent invasive plants that grow in our area. And this is one of them right here, and this probably is familiar to a lot of people. This little uh, spindly white flowered plant, it's called Alaria, that's the Latin name, otherwise known as garlic mustard. Uh, it was, you know, a plant that came over hundreds of years ago, you know, and uh, it just took off in our climate here. And it, it'll, it'll just cover open areas. It grows in shade, it grows in full sun, it grows everywhere. 
you know, this is a plant that you really do not need to use an herbicide to control it. When the plant is in this state here, where it, it's, it's in flower, okay, and you can actually see, I'm going to show you right here, you can see these little thin spikes on the side. Those are going to be the seed pods, okay? So the plant is actually forming its seeds right now. When the plant's in that phase, if you weed whack it at the very base of the plant, right at the ground level, you're going you're gonna to basically kill the plant. This is a bi, uh, what's called a biennial. Um, this plant was a very low growing to the ground plant last year. It did not flower. This year, year number two, it produces its flower stalk flowers. When it drops its seed, as the season goes on, it dies, and that, that particular plant will never grow back again. However, each of these seed pods contains dozens of seeds. This plant might have a, a few hundred seeds in it. And guess what? That means a few hundred more plants. So you, you know, the key is to eliminate this plant before it goes to seed. I've had very good success at this phase, okay, at the phase here of weed whacking it. If you wait too long, if you wait until the flowers are gone and all you have are the seed pods and they're starting to get fat, do not weed whack it. Those seeds will mature as they, you know, if you cut the plant down and it lies on the ground, those seeds are going to mature as that plant material decays. And then guess what? You've got more plants. So just a little sidebar discussion of another very, very aggressive uh, invasive plant here. And, uh, it's not, it, this is a debate, and I'm not sure whether, how everybody sits on this, but we've got some poison ivy, leaves of three, let it be. Uh, it's a native plant, and it actually is a very important food source for birds, but I try to eliminate it when I see it because, you know, it causes a lot of problems for us two-legged people, or two-legged creatures. So I just wanted to do a video that would be a follow-up to where we were last week. I'm gonna to try to get you guys on level ground here. Sorry about all that jibbing and jibbing. Well, maybe if I lock my tripod, it would, it would be better. So, you know, on a property like ours, the, the key is management. I'm never going to eliminate all of the multi-floor rows. When I identify a patch and I treat it as I showed you, that will not grow back. Now, that's not to say that if I am not careful and I miss one of those little stems, yeah, it's, it's going to come back. But when, when that happens, now that everything's cut down low, I'll see it leaf out and I can quickly do a little spot treatment. I carry that spray bottle in the tractor all the time, and it, it's always there. So if, I'm, if I happen to be out doing some other work and I notice some new plants coming up, I'll go and cut them and spray them, and it's done. So you have to stay on top of this stuff. Our climate here in southeastern Pennsylvania in the summers, it's very warm, it's very humid, very moist soil. That stuff just loves those conditions, and so that's why it's so prolific. But you really, you know, don't, if you're going to be tackling this kind of stuff on your own property, give yourself a little peace of mind and just accept the fact it will never, ever go away. Um, Multi-floor rose makes little, little tiny uh, rose hips, and that's what birds eat for food. And once they eat them, then later on they poop it out, and it could be anywhere. You could clear an area and think, man, I just did a great job, and the next season you've got 10 new little plants coming up. But if you can get it down to a manageable level like this, it's going to be a whole lot easier. And each year, the maintenance gets less and less and less. So I hope this was helpful. This is a really hot topic. There's a lot of debate. You know, people, you know, either hate using herbicides or they love using them or they think that, you know, herbicides are going to be the end of the earth. I'm not going to get into that discussion. That's not what this is about. Again, you know, uh, not everybody should be using herbicides, trust me. <laughs> um, you know, I have my thoughts about 
you know, how many people have problems with herbicides and get sick or, and, and I often wonder, do they ever read the instructions? Do they know how to use them? Like I said, I've been professionally trained to apply these products. I know, you know, how to handle them. I know how to be safe with them, but that's not everybody. So there are companies, landscape management companies that do this kind of work. Uh, if you're not comfortable using those products, um, then you probably shouldn't be using them. You probably should talk to somebody who is more skilled at it. Um, there are organic products uh, such as horti what's called horticultural vinegar. It's, it's a very, very strong uh, vinegar. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's much more acidic than your cooking vinegar. Uh, however, you know, please understand organic does not mean safe. That doesn't mean you can get it on your skin or if you splash it in your eyes, it's not gonna hurt you. It will hurt you very, very badly. If you read the precautions on the, uh, the label of a container of horticultural vinegar, it's probably as long, if not longer, of a list of warnings than it is on the glyphosate or the triclopyr. The, the problem with those products, and I've tried so many of them, I've tried you know half a dozen different products over the years that are organic, they just don't produce the results that the herbicides that, that, that we're talking about produce. And I have to make a decision. I only have so much time for land management. I got a lot of other things I have to do, including hold a full-time job. So, you know, I, I have to do things in the most efficient way possible. So I hope that makes some sense. Um, you know, if you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Until next time, John here from Catbird Hill. Take care.